Hi, it's me, Mr. B. Today we're going to start into the factoring chapter. Um, we're going to start here with GCF, which is greatest common factor. This is going to be one of the, the techniques that we learn in this chapter. Um, GCF, or greatest common factor, is the backwards of the distributive property. You guys have done distributive property a whole bunch of times in your life. And this is just doing it in reverse. Now, it really doesn't matter right now, but we're going to always start with GCF. So anytime we ever do any factoring problem, we're always going to start with GCF. It doesn't really matter right now because I'm telling you, for all the problems you're going to do here, you're going to do GCF. Um, so you can see the example there. Um, we're going to factor 6x cubed plus 15x squared y. All right, so the procedure for factoring GCF. Um, step number one, I want to find the largest factor for all the coefficients. So I'm looking right here at the 6 and the 15. Those are my coefficients. Now, in this case, I only have two coefficients. If I had 3, 4, 5, 100 coefficients, I would want to find the biggest thing that I can take out of all of the numbers. Since I only have two here, I'm just looking for the biggest thing that, that, uh, that I can take out of 6 and 15 that divides out evenly. And I can see that uh, 3 is probably the number that I'm going to use for the largest factor of all the coefficients. Um, it's not 2 because, well, even though 2 goes into 6, 2 does not go evenly into 15. 5 goes into 15 evenly, but it does not go into 6 evenly. So 3 is the largest factor of all the coefficients. And remember, I'm doing GCF, greatest common factor. Greatest meaning the biggest, common meaning it has to be the same in all of them, and factor, which is what I'm looking um, to multiply out. All right, so step number two, find the largest factors of each variable. All right, so I'm going to look at the x's first. So I'm looking for the biggest thing that I can take out of all of the terms. Well, I see that the first term there has an x cubed, and the second term there has an x squared. So the biggest thing that I can take out is x. I can take out 1x. So can I take out 2x's? Yeah, I can take out 2x's because I can take 2x's out of the first term, and I can also get 2x's out of the second term. So it's x squared. So the biggest thing I can take out of, of each of those terms is x squared. Now I go to the y's. Well, I don't see a y in the first term, but I see a y in the second term. So I can't take any y's out of all of the terms. Since I can't take any y's out of all the terms, I'm done. So the largest factor that I can take out as far as coefficients goes is 3. The largest factor of the variables is x squared. Now if I could take a y out, then I'd have to put that down for, for a variable. I'm going to look for each variable. If I had seven variables in each term, I'd have to go through each variable and see what the biggest thing that I could take out is. Okay, so it says multiply, step number three, multiply the GCF together and put it in front of a set of parentheses. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that. So the GCF is 3x squared. Now, if I had more variables, I'd have to bring those variables out, but that's all I have right now. So step number four says divide each term by the GCF and put the leftovers inside the parentheses. So what that means is I'm going to take each of these factors up here, or each of these terms up here in my problem, in my polynomial, and I'm going to divide each of them by 3x squared. What that is going to give me is what's left over, which is what goes inside of my parentheses. All right, so let's do this first term. Let's do the uh, coefficients first. So I'm going to divide the coefficient. 6 divided by 3 is 2 x cubed divided by x squared. So in order to divide them, I'm going to subtract the um, exponents. That's one of the rules, the exponent rules that you learned in algebra. So x cubed minus x squared, so x cubed divided by x squared, which is 3 minus 2, is going to be x to the first. So I'm just going to write x. Now I'm going to put a plus sign, because that's this plus sign right here. Now I go to the next term. The next term is 15x squared y over 3x squared. 15 divided by 3 is 5. x squared divided by x squared, 2 minus 2 is 0. So the x's, there aren't any x's left, so I'm not going to have any x's here in this term. And then I have a y at the top, but I don't have any y's at the bottom, so that means I'm going to have a y left over there. All right, so I think that's my answer. Before I actually make it my answer, I need to check it. Step number five is the check. And I'm going to check the answer by distributing. So I have 3x squared as my GCF. 
and then inside I have 2x plus 5y. So that means if I distribute the 3x squared to both of these terms, I should end up with what I originally started with. 3x squared times 2x. 3 times 2 is 6. x squared times x is x cubed. All right, the first term looks good. Plus 3x squared times 5y. 3 times 5 is 15. x squared and y is just x squared y. They're not alike in any way. So since that looks the same as that, then I know I did it right. So my final answer is going to be that right there, 3x squared times 2x plus 5y. Okay, example number one is going to be to factor 4a plus 6 using GCF. First step is find the largest factor of the coefficients. So the largest factor of 4 and 6, the biggest thing that goes into both of them evenly is going to be a 2. Uh, 3 goes into 6, but 3 does not go into 4, so I can't use 3. So 2 is going to be my, my largest factor there. For the variables, I see an A in the first term, but not in the second term. So there's no variables I can take out of both terms. So that means I'm going to go ahead and open up my parentheses. My GCF is 2. Now all the leftovers have to go back inside the um, parentheses. Let me go ahead and erase this. I'm going to move it down because I'm going to write some at the top there. Okay, so I'm going to divide each of these by the GCF. Okay, so I take 4a and divide it by 2. So let's start with the coefficients. 4 divided by 2 is 2. a divided by nothing by 1 is just a. Okay, now I have a plus sign. 6 divided by 2 is going to give me 3. And I think I'm done. I don't know for sure, though. I want to check it first. So what I want to do is go ahead and distribute 2 times... 2a is going to be 4a, 2 times positive 3 is 6, so I end up with 4a plus 6. That matches what I originally started with, so my final answer is 2 parentheses 2a plus 3. Example number 2 is going to be to factor 2bc squared minus 10bc plus 14c using GCF. Step number 1, I want to find what's in common as far as the uh, coefficients go. So I'm going to look at 2, 10, and 14 and try and figure out what the biggest thing that goes into e each of them evenly is. And it looks like it's probably just going to be a 2. Um, so I'm going to bring out a 2 um, because my limiting coefficient there is this 2 right there. Um, 10 has factors of 2 and 5. 14 has factors of 2 and 7. So the biggest thing I can take out of all those is going to be a 2. All right, so as far as the variables go, um, first thing I'm going to look for is B. So I see a B in the first term, B in the second term, and no B in the third term. So I can't say that I can take a B out of every term. I can take it out of the first two terms, but there's no B in this term. So that means that I can't take a B out of all of them. Okay, so now I move on to C. Um, there is a C in the first term. Actually, there's a C squared in the first term. There's a C in the second term and a C in the third term. So the biggest number of C's that I can take out, C squared means I have C times C, so there's two C's there. Um, the second term is just one C, the third term is just one C. So the most I can take out of all of the terms is just one C. And that's because of these two terms here. There's only one C in each of those terms. So I'm going to put a C down here in my GCF. So my GCF looks like it's going to be 2C. All right, so now I'm going to make whatever's left over go inside the parentheses, so that means I'm going to divide each of my terms by 2c. Okay, so the first term, let's divide the coefficients. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so I don't really need to write the 1. If you want to write the 1, that's fine, but you don't need to. I have a b on top, nothing on the bottom, so that means I'm going to have a b left over. Now I have c squared divided by c, so remember when you divide um, Exponents, it just means you're subtracting the exponent, so it's 2 minus 1, so that means there's a c left, c to the first, which is just c. All right, now I move to the next term, so I have a minus sign. 10 divided by 2 is going to be 5. Um, b over, there's no b on the bottom, so that means I'm going to have a b in my, my left over there. And then c divided by c, that's just going to be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, so c divided by c is just 1. I don't need to write it. Um, just like 2 over 2 is 1 and 5 over 5 is 1, c over c is 1, which means it just kind of cancels out. It simplifies to 1. Now I have a plus sign. Um, 14 divided by 2 is going to give me 7. 
and then c divided by c again is just 1. It cancels out 1 minus 1 for the exponents, goes to 0, so I don't really need to write anything there. So I think that's my final answer. Let's go ahead and check it. So I'm going to um, go ahead and distribute the 2c. 2c times bc, so 2 times 1 is just 2. Um, I have a b, and then c times c is c squared, minus 2c times 5b, 2 times 5 is 10. Then I have a b and a c, and then plus... 2c times 7 is 14c. It looks like that matches what I got up here, so my final answer is 2c parentheses bc minus 5b plus 7. Example number 3, I want to factor 10w plus 5 using GCF. Okay, first step, find, what's, uh, find the largest factor um, of the coefficients. So it looks like out of 10 and 5, the biggest thing that goes into both of those is going to be a 5. Um, and then I look at the variables next. I have a w in the first term. I have nothing as far as variable goes in the second term. So it looks like I'm not going to have any variables in my GCF. Okay, so now I open up my parentheses. Now, this problem looks pretty, pretty similar to the first example, except this one has one major difference. And I'll show you that here in a second. Okay, I'm going to divide both of these terms by the GCF. 10 divided by 5 is going to give me 2. I have a W on top, nothing on the bottom, so I'm going to be left with a W. Plus, 5 over 5 is a 1. So you might say, well, it just goes away. I don't need it anymore. However, if I was to just close the parentheses here, and that's not the right answer, but if I was to just close the parentheses there, I would never be able to get 10W plus 5 back when I distribute the 5. 5 times 2W would give me the 10W. But if I don't have anything holding a spot over here, then I can never get this 5 back up here. So I need 5 times something to give me the 5 from the original problem. All right. So when I get to the, to the point where um, I have nothing left in a term, 5 divided by 5 is just 1, I need to write the 1 because that's going to hold the spot. So when I go to redistribute this, I can get 5 times 2w is 10w. 5 times 1 is 5. Now I get my original polynomial back, so that means my final answer is 5 times parentheses 2w plus 1.